Welcome to the first episode in a series of videos on Of Mice and Men. These videos are intended to help you revise for your English Lit exam or for the control test you might be required to do in class. This one is on the novel's context and will cover the following topics. First, John Steinbeck's background. Then we'll look at the Wall Street crash and its impact. The Great Depression of the 1930s and how it affected the USA. We'll define what migrant workers are and look at the so-called American dream and how it features in the novel. We'll briefly explore 1930s social attitudes that are present in the book and look at the significance of the novel's title. So about John Steinbeck, where well, he published Of Mice and Men in 1937 at the age of 35, and this was significant because it was still during the Great Depression, which we'll define shortly. Steinbeck spent time as a bindle stiff in the 1920s and he also travelled California researching the lives of migrant workers in the 1930s. He became deeply concerned with the struggles of the poor, especially migrant workers. His writing's famous for championing the underdogs of society, which means those who are disadvantaged or oppressed by others. Of Mice and Men was criticised by the US government on its release for misrepresenting the conditions faced by migrant workers at the time, but it was critically acclaimed and very, very popular. So what was the Wall Street crash? It was a stock market crisis which occurred on the Tuesday, the 29th of October 1929, and was later nicknamed Black Tuesday. $30 billion was wiped off the price of shares as the stock market began to slide in the week leading up to the crash, and $14 billion was lost on the day itself. It's difficult to imagine the size of an equivalent sum of money today. The crash was caused by overconfidence in the market due to a period of economic boom during the 1920s. Too many people borrowed money to invest in the stock market, and when a period of prosperity is based on loans, a crisis is often inevitable. When prices started to fall, panic selling began. This means that investors decided to get their money back, fearing that they would lose it. This caused a chain reaction of selling, which made prices fall even faster. Imagine a row of dominoes which keep on knocking each other over. The effects of the Wall Street crash. It brought the prosperity of the roaring 20s, as they were known, to an abrupt end. It caused huge financial uncertainty and had a major impact on US and world economies, plunging countless countries into crisis. It was one factor which contributed to the Great Depression. It caused the collapse of 4,000 US banks, and in many cases this meant people lost their savings. So what was the Great Depression itself? Well, the Great Depression was a long period of severe economic recession during the 1930s. The Depression began with the Wall Street crash and quickly spread around the world due to the influential nature of the US economy. The US only recovered in 1941 when industry was needed to build ships, make weapons and ammunition and the other essentials required to ready the country for World War II. Its effects were widespread. Wages fell, meaning less money in the pockets of workers. Businesses failed, including more banks, which put people out of work. Unemployment rose sharply. At its worst point, 25% of the working population did not have a job. There was a big increase in poverty, which put huge pressure on average families, particularly men who were seen as the main source of income. A drought in the agricultural heartland of the USA, one of the country's main industries at the time, made matters worse and work scarcer. Men found themselves with little choice but to leave their families and travel to find work, with the intention of sending money home to support their wives and children. They often travelled alone. Many of them headed west to California, where the weather was fine and there was a higher chance of finding work on ranches and farms. This is where the novel is set, specifically in the Salinas Valley, which is the area shown by the photo at the start of this video. About migrant workers. The men who left their families behind to look for work were known as migrant or itinerant workers. The word itinerant means travelling and comes from Latin. Most migrant workers travelled alone to where there was work and were often sent to certain places by agencies like Murray and Reddy who are mentioned in the novel. These people kept themselves to themselves and they were guarded and suspicious of others because they didn't have much in the way of possessions or money. So what little they had was important and they were worried about getting into trouble and losing their jobs. They were poorly paid, with the ranch of the novel paying the average worker just $50 a month, which is around 31 quid by today's exchange rate. Many intended to send money home to their families, but they often wasted it in the local town, on drink, gambling or in whorehouses. Migrant workers moved from place to place, never staying put for long. This made it difficult to form friendships and contributed to keeping most people as strangers to everyone else. It was a harsh, lonely existence, with long working hours, little pay, with no one to confide in about how you felt. One of the things that runs through the novel is the American dream, and this is related to the context. Life was harsh in the 30s, as we know, due to the financial crisis, so is it any wonder that most of the characters dream of a better life? 
The American dream is an idea that anyone can achieve goals through hard work and personal sacrifice. However, none of the characters in the novel achieve their dreams. This is not a happy thought, and Steinbeck doesn't really offer us a comforting explanation for this truth. George dreams of a piece of land he can call his own so that he can be independent and live comfortably. He says, we're going to have a little house, and he and Lenny constantly refer to their dream to keep them motivated during hard times. Lenny shares George's dream, but it is a much simpler version, which reflects his disability. I get to tend the rabbits, he says, and the day he gets to do this is the day he will be truly happy. Curly's wife's dream is twofold. I think I don't like to talk to somebody every once in a while. Show she craves friendship, but the men on the ranch assume she is looking to go behind Curly's back, and they stay away from her. She also says, a guy told me he could put me in pictures, which reveals her desire to go off to Hollywood, be a movie star, and become famous. Candy's dream is just to be useful again. I ain't much good, but I could cook and tend the chickens. He puts himself down a lot, which shows he has low self-esteem due to his age and his missing hand. Crook's dreams of being treated as an equal to white people. If I say something, why it's just a nigger saying it. He wishes for an end to racist attitudes and to be counted as a person instead of segregated for the colour of his skin. All of these dreams fail, because the characters are trapped by social limitations and obstacles which they cannot overcome. Steinbeck seems to be saying life was too harsh, and that's just the way it was. It's not a satisfactory explanation for the reader, but it's the one we're forced to accept. A little bit more information on 1930s social attitudes. As we know, times were very harsh, and people guarded what they had and valued their privacy for the fear of getting in trouble and getting sacked. This made friendships very difficult, plus people moved on quickly and for no real reason. Prejudice was everywhere, in its various forms such as racism, crooks, Sexism, Curly's wife, ageism, Candy, and discrimination, Lenny. Carlson is the stereotypical ranch worker. Anyone who differs from him seems to suffer prejudice in the novel. All of this made achieving dreams very, very difficult, and for the characters in the novel, impossible. Let's finish off by looking at the novel's title. This comes from a poem called To a Mouse, written by the revered Scottish poet Robbie Burns. It's drawn from these four lines. The best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glay, and leave us naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Translated into standard English, this means sometimes even the best thought out plans go wrong and leave us feeling grief and pain instead of the happiness we intended. This could be applied to all of the characters in the novel who dream of a better life. You'll notice too, however, that Burns offers no explanation as to why life treats people this harshly at times. Thanks for watching. Tune in to episode 2, which starts looking at the characters in the novel in a bit more detail.